Hello everyone and welcome to the 33rd Objective C tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering how we can work with blocks in our code. So blocks was an addition made by Apple which is a simple extension to C. And I could have put this tutorial in the C tutorials but I figured since Apple uses it more in their classes and more in Objective C than anything else um, I figured I'd just throw it in the Objective C tutorials. So anyway uh, we'll be having quite a few tutorials on blocks, uh, this will be a fairly simple introduction to it uh, on how to just simply make a block and a variable for your block and how you can execute that later on. So anyway, a uh, very basic introduction and yeah, so that's about it. So to start out, uh, the simple, simplest way that I think you would define a block as is just a block of code. So if you just want to think of it as I defined a block of code right here, and you know your block basically just contains that code and you can pass that code along around to other places you could call that block later on you could pass that block of information in a method if you wanted and that's the pretty interesting thing about blocks is they are basically just a container for your code and you can just throw this code wherever you want and it can be executed later on so uh, this is a pretty interesting addition to C in itself and it uh, gets rid of um, some things that you'd have to do in the past. So anyway, um, we're just going to be introducing uh, how to work with this in this tutorial. So blocks, pretty simple. Um, if you just want to declare one, you just have to declare it with the uh, caret key. And then you just say open brace like that and close brace. And between those two braces, you just define whatever block of code you want to define. So if you want to say, well, I'll return six in this block of code, and now that is your block. So you put whatever code you want in your block, and then you end it off with a semicolon like that. And that's basically what your block uh, will look like. So if you were to, um, of course, run this later, you really don't have any option of running it, because we don't have any name or anything to identify this block by. Yes, this is how you create a block. This is the way that you define a block. But since there's no variable attached to it, uh, there's really no purpose. It's like saying six, and we don't have a variable name for it. So um, of course, we have to figure out how we can call this block of code or you know, carry this block of code around in our program. So to do this, there is no simple you know, name for a block. Um, it's not just like a type like we would work with if we were working with an int or a float it, and it's not like a class either it's kind of its own naming convention altogether so um, again this is where many of the con or a lot of the confusion comes from in blocks is kind of how this is laid out so it is quite simple though once you get used to it so basically once you want to declare a block you have a lot of things to think about for your block so a block, if you want to almost think about it as a function, which isn't the greatest thing to think about it as because it isn't, it's just it contains a block of code, but it has many similar properties to what a function has. So a block, for example, has a return type, and it also can take parameters, which is kind of interesting as it is just sort of like a variable, and it just contains a block of code. So um, blocks, though, do have return types, and they also have parameters that we can have if we want them. So let's just uh, start by creating our own block variable. So if we want to have a return type for our block of int, we could say, well, this block is going to return some integer value. And now to declare the name of the block, you would just create your uh, your parentheses like that, and then you could have the caret key with my block. And the caret key just represents the block variable. So anytime you're going to create a block variable, you just start it with the caret key, and that represents that you have created now a block. So now that we have that, we also have to have what parameters it's going to take in. And if you don't want to take any parameters in for your block, you simply say void. So now we've created a block variable. And I know this looks rather weird for a variable, but um, it works, like I said, sort of like a function, but it is more or less like just a variable. So again, the return type for this block, if we were to call it later on, would be a integer, and it would take no parameters. So we'll see how we can call this block later on, 
But that's basically the layout of how the block works. And just remember, you have to have the care key for when you define it. So now that we have the variable that will contain this block, we just have to define the block. And I showed you how to do that before. You just create the care key, open and close brackets, and now you just define whatever code you want. So let's go back to that return six example, and we'll finish off our block with a semicolon like so. And now we have a block variable that will return the value of six. And again, it takes no parameters, and it just has that return value right there. So if we wanted to call this block later on in our program, it's quite simple. So we're just going to print out some integer here. And since my block returns an int, it works well. So we'll just say my block. And we have to use the parentheses to represent the parameters that we're going to use in our block. But again, since my block is has no parameters, it's void, we just have open and close parentheses like that. If we were, for example, to have a parameter of an int, we could pass in a 5 like that. And if we were to have two parameters, it works the same as a function would. Just have a comma and then multiple parameters. But of course, our block doesn't have any parameters, so we just have open and closed brackets like that. And if we were to run this code right now, you'd see that we get the value of 6. So, as you can see, this block basically just contains some piece of code that can be executed at a later point. So let's do a few more things here with this. Let's say that we want to uh, use some variable that's in our main method. So we'll create a variable called num and we'll assign it a value of two. So now we're gonna say, well, this block is gonna multiply whatever num is by a value of six. So now we'll have two times six and my block, of course, will return that value. So the thing just to take away from this is that the blocks also have the scope of the main fun or the function that it's uh, assigned or built in, basically. So, whatever um, it also has scope, basically, of the variables that are inside the function where it's declared. So that's another interesting aspect, I guess, of it, um, but nothing too special. It works basically like anything else does in C. It just has it can see any of the variables in the local scope. So let's go ahead and run this again, and as you can see we would get a value of 12. So that's great, uh, that's what we expected. So what would happen if we were to change the value of num later on? So let's say num now gets five. And we go to nslog this, and we wanna call the block, and we go to execute this, and as you can see, hmm, look at that, we get two 12s. And you might have expected that, well, the num is changing, so you know, we're returning num times 6, 5 times 6 is 30, so, you know, why aren't we getting that? Well, the reason for this is because you always have to go back to the idea that the block is just a block of code. It doesn't change as other things change around it. So, just like a normal variable that you would assign, the blocks don't change as other values change. This num isn't going to change as I change something else, and this block isn't going to change as I change something else either. Once it's assigned, it's assigned with the values that are inside the block. So now, as you can see, basically what this block now is going to do forever and for always is it's going to return the value 2 times 6. So the block from here on out will always return the value of 12. Now, of course, if I had parameters for this, that would change. But uh, for now, we don't have any parameters. So uh, as you can see, as the variables change around it, the block doesn't change with it. So the block uh, doesn't change as the other things change, and that's basically the main idea of how a block works. It doesn't, it's not supposed to adapt to other things. Like I said, you always just have to go back to the idea that it's just a block of code, and you can carry that block around with you and call it at a later point. So anyway, that's as far as I'm gonna go with uh, this block tutorial. We'll have uh, more tutorials on blocks. We'll introduce parameters in the next tutorial as well, which really isn't much harder, but I'm just trying to cut these tutorials a little shorter and explain them uh, to the best of my ability. So anyway, uh, that's uh, pretty much all you have to know about blocks. They have return types. They can take parameters, which we'll get into. You assign blocks by using the care key and then the curly braces. You define whatever code you want for your block between those and then you can execute your block later on like this, with just the parentheses with whatever parameters you need to pass in, but of course here we 
have voids, so we don't have any parameters. But that's the basics of blocks. You define a block, it holds a chunk of code, and it does whatever it's supposed to do. So anyway, I'll, uh, if you have any questions on this tutorial, please leave your questions in the comments below, and I uh, will be sure to answer them. And anyway, I'll see you next tutorial.